I'm just going to verify torque on the front axle with something that has that much torque on it. You're really going to need a torque wrench. You could tell if it was sloppy loose, but uh, it's hard to tell the difference between 30 pounds and 60 pounds. Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. Today I want to share a story with you how I've been working with my local dealer at All American on a project that we've been doing. Now with Harley Davidson, you fall into two categories. You either love them or you hate them. Now I fall into the first category. I've had nothing but positive experiences about this bike. Very pleased so far. My take on motorcycle in general, two wheels are two wheels. As long as you're happy with it, that's all that matters. Now I'll give Harley credit on some things though. Uh, they have a very, very solid dealer network, at least the ones that I've dealt with. Now, I've, I have probably yeah, three or four dealers within 60 or 70 miles from me, and all the experience that I've had with them have been fantastic. But the one that's closest to me, the one uh, that I talked about earlier, All-American, uh, they've kind of gone above and beyond, me personally and more for the motorcycle community in general. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, I've done a lot that have featured this dealership. From the previous GM, uh, his name is Smurf. He had a little blue dude. He let me come in and do a video of him and his custom bike. And now he's gone and he runs a dealership uh, near Richmond, Virginia. And the new GM, his name's Lyndon, uh, has just pick it, up, pick it up from where he left off and it's been great. You know, let, let me come in there. I've done first rides with him. He actually took his time on a couple videos that I did with him. One being he did a one on a 114 touring models and talked about the engines. And more recently, he did one and with the marketing manager, Jess, and they let me walk around the dealership and do a behind the scenes, talk about how their dealership works. And one of the things in that vid I talked about and the things that he does specifically for that dealership is what they call Harley Davidson seminars. They're completely free. And he does this to help drive education within the community, within the community that I live in. And he posts these and they have a variety of uh, different topics. I know they've done one on Bluetooth. They've done one on stage upgrades. They've done Milwaukee 8. They've done how to travel or how to pack when you go on long rides, stuff like that. So as we were doing this uh, video, of me walking around the dealership we were talking about these seminars and as we started talking he said you know I'm coming up with some future topics but the only thing I'd like to do more is do like a video with it like right now when you go to these seminars they're uh, they're usually on a Saturday and they're, they're about two hours two hours long and an added bonus they give you hamburgers and hot dogs when you get there so that's definitely a bonus unless you're vegetarian then well you're SOL of course, there is an Amish farm near there that has cucumbers and carrots, so there's that. So as we were starting to talk about some of the future projects that he wants to do, he wanted to do one on a tire change for, um, you know, touring bike, and he wanted to do a full service. He's saying, you know, I'd, I'd like to do some something with video, and he's like, the ones he does now, and when you go to these seminars, you know, like the stage upgrades, he had like all the engine parts spread out all over the table and kind of went through each piece and what each stage did, but he said, I'd like to do a video. And uh, the more we're t we start talking, I just said, well, why don't I just help you out? I'll help you uh, film some of these, put something together for you for your seminars that he would use just for when, when he does these things, you know, like the tire change or the full service. You know, I figured I'd pay it forward for the amount of stuff that he's done personally for me and, you know, in this channel, but more importantly, what he's done for the community by doing these type things. It's not just seminars, they do at this uh, dealership. He's does, he does a lot of other different things as well. And that's how it all came about. So I spent one, I think it was one or two days, I went up there and did two different videos for him. And they took like two, two and a half hours to uh, film, depending on which one it is. And I went home, edited it and put it together for him. And they ended up almost being 45 minutes each. And they came together uh, real well. And they, they uh, from start to finish, everything, uh, what they do in each one, from the tire change to the full service. And now when he has these seminars in the future, he'll have this as more of a visual. And uh, I love doing it. I really enjoy taking the time and doing that because of what his dealer does. And you know, that's the type of things I'm talking about is like the dealer network and some of the things they do specifically at the dealer and hopefully you have good experiences with the dealer uh, by you so what i'm going to do 
is uh, I took an hour and a half of these videos, put them together for you, uh, like a 10, 12 minute clips of them, just to show you kind of how it all came together. Uh, the guy you'll see in the video is Lyndon, and then uh, he's talking in the background. And so get an idea kind of what he does at these seminars. I think it's pretty damn cool, right? So enjoy them. Leave me your comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys soon. Welcome to All American Harley Davidson. Today we're going to show you what goes into a full service. I think this is one of the things that there's a lot of confusion about. Many people think that it is just an oil change, uh, but it is a lot more than an oil change. And we're going to show you all the steps that goes into a properly done uh, full service here at All American Harley Davidson. This is the clutch assembly in here. Uh, this is a newer Milwaukee 8 style clutch. You have three coil springs on most of these Harley Davidsons over the years, we've had diaphragm springs. This is relatively new. Good news is we have uh, oil in all three cavities. So he's going to start by removing drain plug one at a time, obviously. These drain plugs all have magnets on the end of them. So we can take a look at that and see it's pretty typical to see a little bit of metal fur on the end of that thing, but if you see uh, chunks of larger shrapnel, that is a sign that we have a problem. On some models, of course, you would need to lube the clutch cable and lube the throttle cables. Uh, this motorcycle has different demands, but it does not have a clutch cable and it does not have throttle cables. Clutch is hydraulic and the throttle cables are electronic. So this model is a 17, so these tires, as far as the date code go, are going to be absolutely fine. Um, the oldest they could possibly be is a 16 date code. Uh, but inspecting the tire tread just to see uh, what the depth is in a few different places. Also to see if there are signs of uneven wear. It is surprising how much more quickly tires will wear and how they will wear unevenly. Uh, when the tire pressure is improperly set. It's really a critical piece of motorcycle safety and maintenance and something you can do at home. These bikes vibrate and road vibrations and time and so forth. It's a good opportunity to get around this motorcycle and just look for uh, loose things, make sure that everything is, is snugged up. So you gotta clean up these drain plugs. Um, some people prefer to start with new ones, but you can reuse those. Uh, what you can't reuse is the O-ring. Always, always, always replace an O-ring. This is the worst possible place to try to save a dollar. Uh, what happens is those O-rings kind of get uh, nicked in the process of going on and coming off, and the O-ring looks like it might be okay, but then it lets loose as you tighten it up. Um, and, and then you got a real problem on your hands. All right now he's going to fill the transmission. This does not take a full quart in most cases. And you don't want to overfill it. So he'll put an amount in and let it settle and then check it. So we've got a pretty fancy oil delivery system here. Uh, rather than throwing away more bottles or wrestling with um, other funnels and, and uh, pump tanks, this is an air delivery system that comes straight out of a 55 gallon. And it makes it easy to get a very precise amount of oil uh, at each technician's lift. Okay, so on the new Milwaukee eights, we don't check the, we don't replace the spark plugs at every full service. Uh, the specification from Harley Davidson is every 30,000 miles or every two years. Uh, this motorcycle is exactly two years old, so we're going to go ahead and and change these spark plugs. Unfortunately, while one of them is pretty easy to get to. The other one is nicely hidden underneath the tank. So we're going to have to start by taking the tank off uh, in order to get that out of the way. And then there's a special tool uh, required to take the uh, center spark plug wire off without damaging it. Um, and then we're, we're going to be able to access those plugs. So you start by preparing these plugs, just verify the gap um, on them. They do come pre-gap from the factory, but you always want to check that in case there was a, a problem or a mistake. Uh, these plugs have a different gap than the previous uh, iteration. Um, 
And then uh, you always want to put some anti-seize on those threads to prevent them from seizing up on that aluminum. Um, it, not uncommon to see a spark plug come out and remove the aluminum threads with it and um, that's expensive. So that unit is wirelessly connected to our digital technician and we'll take a look at that screen but that's going to give us a printout of a, a ton of vital material on this motorcycle. Let's go take a look. So you can see this gives you a blizzard of information. Um, some of these values are changing as the motor warms up. You can see the RPMs, uh, you know, intake air temperature sensor, manifold absolute pressure. It's giving you values on those sensors uh, because those sensors are what is telling the ECM what to do and how that motorcycle should run. I'm going to verify that all these lights are operating properly. Those are some fancy front turn signals on the fairing. But you also want to make sure the regular ones are working. So he's checking high-low, turn signals, indicators, brake lights, horn operation, all of those basics. It's worth noting that some people feel that the best possible thing to do is to have it as high as you can possibly get it. But A, this, even though the motorcycle came up to temperature, the oil isn't full operating temperature yet. And uh, what you really need it to do is to be in between the marks, not absolutely at the top. Because if you try to get it absolutely at the top, inevitably you will overfill it sometimes and, uh, and just cause a little bit of a mess. So today we're going to show you what goes into changing the tire on a 2017 uh, Harley-Davidson Street Glide. I think most of us grew up knowing how to change a tire on a car. And so for a lot of people they think, well, motorcycle's smaller and a little bit lighter, so it's probably even easier. But in fact, there's a lot more stuff that goes into it. We're going to show you how we do that uh, here at All-American Harley-Davidson. So we've got some tools laid out. Um, yeah, mallet, specific wrench, breaker bar, torque wrenches, which are very important for any of these jobs, uh, some lubricant, uh, blue Loctite for this job, and anti-seize for the axles, and of course, always utilizing a factory service manual for any of these jobs to make sure that you've got your um, procedures right and torque specs right. So with the two bolts off of the back, he's loosened up the muffler clamp and uh, need to use a little persuasion to loosen things up. All that heat and carbon uh, puts those mufflers on pretty tight and they don't always come off easily. So he's going to get a frame jack under there just to remove tension. Okay, with the mufflers out of the way, he's got a little more access to things. Um, going to get that retention clip off of the axle. Um, pretty big beefy nut there and requires a lot of torque so he's using a breaker bar. This is a special little trick using uh, purpose-built caliper bags, right? <laughs> and that's just to protect things, keep keep uh, metal on metal contact, uh, things from getting nicked up. Two really important things to check while this is off is the sealed wheel bearings which are fairly durable um, but uh, they're very difficult to check until you get the wheel off. Uh, when you spin them with the wheel off, you can feel whether they're smooth or they're crunchy. Uh, if they're crunchy, obviously they need to be replaced. Another thing to check uh, is the, uh, on, on these models is the rubbers, which you can see now, and their uh, fitment with the pulley. Um, in our experience, these things generally last about a tire and a quarter. Obviously very important that that goes into the right place. If you are um, too far away from the rim, you don't get sufficient leverage. And obviously if you nick the rim, that's going to cost you a wheel. This part usually goes a little easier. One of the things that you always want to do when you change a tire is replace the valve stem. And people wonder why. Um, this is obviously a, a very important part of the, the tire sealing process, right? That's a giant hole if this isn't sealed up properly. 
And rubber ages with, with time. I think everybody knows that, but a lot of times you don't think about it. And um, rather than take a chance or wonder if it's going to hold up for the next uh, 15 or so thousand miles, using a wire brush, getting rid of some of that old grime and, and rubber, make sure the ceiling surface is uh, nice and clean as we discussed. Now we're going to check the balance on this. Um, this is a pretty expensive balancing machine. Probably seen them at other car shops, but the idea is that it spins around and notices any difference uh, in weight from one side of the wheel to the other and tells us how much weight it needs and how much to add. All right, start by getting the wheel back in position. Pivot this eccentric adjuster against this plate on the swing arm and that's going to pull it back or allow it to go forward which changes the tension on this belt. And this tool allows him to put 10 pounds of pressure. Um, you can see the 10 pound mark there. 10 pounds of pressure on the belt so you can see what the deflection is at 10 pounds, which is how they determine the spec. And since I just did a little change right there, I want to spin the wheel, make sure that belt's tracking straight. So we can look up in there. As long as the caliper's off, it's a great time to check the brake pads, make sure that uh, there's still sufficient meat on those pads. All right, with everything ready to go, he's going to lower the motorcycle, then get the bags put back on. On earlier models, you saw a uh, quick release uh, fastener, which they have moved away from. Uh, those worked very well, but if you weren't very careful about how they were connected, occasionally you had an issue with the saddlebag falling off. Many people considered that to be a bad thing. 